Okay, um, so when you guys are spliming, I would recommend that you have two things open at least. One of which is your dope sheet, and the other of which is your graph editor. Okay, um, so let's throw more to spline. So select all the controls. If you have IK and FK controls that you are using, make sure that you put both of them into spline. So make sure you have everything selected and visible. Um, so my FK arms weren't visible, so they wouldn't have been selected, so they wouldn't have been spliced, uh, well, included when we put in spline, if buttons were clicked or not. Okay, but it's just best to have everything selected. Okay, so let's select everything there. I'm going to set this dope sheet should be cool. That should have selected everything, and then we can drop it into Bezier. Okay. So first of all, uh, when you put it into Bezier, check and make sure that there's no like blatant issues. Okay, things like feet sliding. Okay, um, if there's no, if it's just drifting between all the poses, so you don't have like your holds aren't holding, um, that kind of thing. Um, and if one of those things are there, so if your feet are sliding, or if your holds aren't holding, okay then I would undo, go back into content, and make sure you go and key those in first. Okay, so go back, put in your moving holds, um, so anywhere where it needs to be holding a position, decide how many frames you want to hold the pose for, and then add a second keyframe to actually hold it in that pose. Okay, um, other than that, go and look at feet sliding, so if there are any feet sliding, figure out why or where, and it's also probably because you've either physically moved it, um, so wherever it's supposed to be holding a particular pose, make sure you're going to duplicate the key on the foot, on the location, in those frames. Okay, so that those don't slide. Okay, so otherwise, when you put it in, um, you know, there's really a lot that we still can do. Okay, um, and that's really, like, first of all, going through the keys and determining what, or if there are any issues, how we can make it better. Okay. And generally, when I do this, I tend to start with um, the, that control over there. Okay, so the upper body control. Um, and look at the motion of the body as a whole. Okay. Um, and when, when I do that, I tend to go and take it literally one parameter at a time. Okay, so that is the torso control. Sometimes these little um, thumbtack icons are on, which keeps it in there even if it isn't selected, so it'll always be there, um, just so that you know. But I'm just going to look at that, and what I tend to do is I try and go and see if there are any clear issues or places where the motion can be smoother if it needs to be smooth, or, you know, more representative of what I'm trying to do. Okay, so if it's a point, for instance, like on a bouncy ball, where those contact points need to hit hard, um, you know, and ricochet sharply back off the ground, that those things are in place. Okay, so here it's pretty much a straightforward movement. Um, so if we scrub through it, and for instance, look at these. Okay, so I generally tend to take it one at a time. Okay, um, so if we look there, this is the X location, okay, and that if we look at they're all at the line on the floor, the X location is in this direction. Okay. And the one thing that I don't recommend you guys do um, when you're splining is first of all delete keys. Okay. Um, if you delete keys, then what you're doing is you're taking off a key of a key pose. And that means, for instance, if we had um, I wish I had an example um, to show you. But if we had, if we needed to adjust our timing at a later stage still, if we don't have all the controls keyed on that particular key pose, for instance, we don't have the hand key there anymore. So it was a straight line, there's no motion, and we took one of the keys, say now this one, off. Okay. Um, if we don't have a key holding it in that pose, if we move that key frame or the key pose off of that frame, and the hand's not keyed anymore, that hand isn't going to move with, so it's not going to hold that pose anymore, so your pose is going to change, okay? Which is, and ultimately it just becomes a mess. 
Um, so don't delete keys and also don't move keys left or right. Okay, so don't move them uh, in time, rather adjust the curve itself. Okay, um, so for instance, if you wanted to say for some reason have this graph um, look like that instead, okay, um, I wouldn't move it that way. I'd rather move this one down and try and get to as close as possible just by adjusting the tangent handles of it. Okay, so be aware of that. Uh, generally, try and keep your dope sheet as neat and tidy as possible. Okay, if you do need to add in keyframes on particular controls, like for instance on the, the walk cycle, we want that foot roll to come down a little bit quicker, then make sure you only add on those controls. So go and key its location and rotation individually. Um, don't necessarily add a whole new pose if it's not necessary for the whole character. Okay, so if we just go through this, I mean, there's not much happening. Um, let's just see if there's maybe a more exciting one. Maybe the Z location, that should be more exciting. Okay, there we go. Okay, so if we go through this, okay, and we think about what exactly is happening here. So the character is basically standing, and he anticipates just before he picks it. Well, goes down to reach for the bar. Uh, he holds onto the bar but there. He pulls it closer. So little things like there, like that elbow pop. Over there, we'd need to get rid of that. Um, but in terms of what this is doing, over there, his weight's a bit far back, I think. I think his weight could shift a little bit more forward. So he can pull back there and come a bit more forward on that pose in the Y direction. Um, and then from there, he goes and rests a little bit before he anticipates and pulls up over there. Okay. Um, and then finally he goes and lifts up over there. Okay, so this is just the Z location, okay, which we know is the up and down position. Okay, so little things that we can do. For instance, over here. Okay, so we have the character pulling back. It's a very small motion. Um, but for instance, if we have a flat line, we know something's not moving. And what Sometimes you can overdo this, um, so it's not necessary to always do it, um, but it does help. Just to add some more motion in it, for instance, where we have that, to basically go and adjust this little bit so that there's a little bit more motion there. Okay, and to do that in the direction of the next curve. Okay, so first of all, if there's nothing clearly wrong with this, so if there wasn't, for instance, like peaks or things that are clearly just in the wrong place, those are the first things you need to fix in spline. And then secondly, to see if we can go and improve it somehow, just to add a little bit more motion. So I like to go, for instance, over there, and you can adjust it, and you'll see what it does. But instead of having that bit over there where that upper body is not moving at all, okay, that if we adjust that a little bit up over there, just in that section there will still be some motion. Okay, um, so just to not have that be dead flat. We can do the same thing over there if we want to, just to go and, you know, add to it a little bit. Okay. Um, for instance, if we... And the, the thing to do is really to look at this. Look at, like, you scrub through it, you see what the motion is doing, and see if that's exactly what you want it to do. Okay. So, for instance, over here, it's moving up a little bit there, and the stop, and then a little bit more. Okay, so we can, and this is entirely like trial and error, or like at least doing it and seeing if it makes it better or worse. Okay, at least in the beginning until you really get comfortable with it. For instance, that frame over there. So we could maybe push it up there because currently what it's doing is it goes and then slows down, it goes and slows down, it goes and then it changes direction a lot. Okay, so we could potentially make that motion more consistent. Okay, by lifting it up there. However, we don't, like a lot of times that would get rid of our hold completely, so potentially we wanted it to hold that position. So we do it and we see what it does. And if we like it or not, we leave it or undo it. Okay, so for instance, in this position, while he's busy drifting over there, I don't actually like that movement there. So I'm going to undo that and pull it back down. I'd prefer that hold that he has over there, that there's a bit of a change, and then while he's breathing there, then he can go and before he whips that back up. Okay, um, sorry, just while I'm on this, little things like that I pick up, I'm going to point out. 
Um, so on this whole thing, so just a de slight detour from the torso control. If you look at where the shoulder is and what it's doing when he goes and whips himself back over here, okay, it makes like a, a little, it goes that way and then it jerks a little bit and it goes back, so it like pops a little bit. So it goes there and then it changes direction and then goes back. So little things like that I'd want to go and smooth out, you know. So maybe it's a good idea just to go and look at and see what's, what's causing that. Um, so first of all, those controls, most probably that one and that one, as well as the rotation on this, would affect that point, okay? And I'd basically start at the root motion of that. So I'd look at, at the X rotation of this control. Um, so let's see, remember home shows you what it is that you, what it is you're doing, okay? So from there, Okay, like little things, I'd drop that a little bit over there, just to smooth into that motion a little bit more. Okay, but I don't think that that's... ...causing it. Let's see, that's probably... Maybe over here... Boom. Okay, let's see what we can do to get rid of that dropping there. And I expect we can smooth out this. So you see over there it's got a general inclination of it's smoothing, well it's curving downward and then goes up and then down again and then flat. Now so smoothing out that corner, see what it does. I'm not saying that's the cause of it, but I'm saying it definitely may have an influence on that. Okay, so you see that's a little bit better already. Um, so there, we don't want it to go forward, we want it to go further backward. So there you see it goes and doesn't go forward, it stops a little bit. So maybe over there we can still pull that back a bit more. Still drops there a little bit. And I think it is this motion that we can adjust as well. So over there, backward, backward, not forward. So whatever we can do over there. Okay, so it's doing a little bit, but it's not, it's a lot smoother than it was. Okay, and you can see that. And it's those little things that we really need to go and look at. And it's really like, um, if you were to do this like super properly, to get to the point where you start splining, okay, is probably about 80% of the end result that takes like 20% of the time. And then the splining process only adds that last little 20%, but it takes like 80% of the time, okay? So it is something that really, it's, doing that last little bit, but it is really a time-consuming process. Okay, which is very important to go through, otherwise you guys will never, you know, know, like that's honestly how you go and make your animation amazing. Okay, and just if we play through that, that motion's a lot smoother already. I think the head as well Um, I just want to see what the head's doing because the head's always done something funny over there for me. I think it's just taking too long to get there. So like after the body's there, it really does take a while. So let's see what we can do. It's also the X rotation. And I expect it's that one that we can pull down a bit. To get there a little bit quicker. Okay, so I'm really just small. 
small things, but that already feels a bit better. But I still wanted some more, so I'm going to drop that curve even more over there. And see, so I've not adjusted anything in time, only the value of it, um, which definitely makes that feel a lot better already. Okay, so if you just look at that little section over there, that little whip. Now, just if we compare this, I'm just going to save it as a new one, to what it was, if we just drop a new one into Spline as well. So I'm just going to select all of these controls, turn those on. So if you just look at that little section over there that we worked on now, this is where it was. Okay, based or compared with so I'm just gonna close that. So you're just looking at that that motion compared with See, it feels more together, it feels more connected, it's a smoother motion. So even though it's a very small change, that one still feels a bit blocky and a bit jerky and as if it's not one smooth fluid thing. Whereas this one then feels like it's just cleaner and smoother. Okay, you guys see it? And that's, that's what this is, it's really it's little things, it's not something that you just do okay and it's something that grows so we do it on one control and we go through and then we look at it um, you know if we add another control to that we're going to smooth that one out and so we go on and on and on and on and on until it is doing what it should all the way through okay so if we just do like maybe another example here. so there the hands are doing not the nicest motion all the way into there so if we look over here particularly that hand Okay, goes up, 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 very quickly down, and then back, and then rotates. So that whole motion could be a lot cleaner from there all the way to there. Okay. Um, so let's see what we can do to fix that. Okay. So first of all, let's go in. I'm just going to look at the dope sheet still so we can see where our poses are and to make sure that we have the right. FKIK switching to make sure that it's not an FKIK issue. So let's see where the actual switch is because I can't remember. Um, so over there. Okay, so it's from that frame to that frame. Okay, so first of all, I can see a couple things. Um, so on this frame, that is my last IK frame, uh, FK frame. So 63, and then it goes to IK over there. Um, the first thing that I realize is my IK control on my FK pose is not where the IK arm is, oh, where the FK arm is. So that I need to go and switch, and I'm guessing it's going to be the same for that hand as well, that the both switch up. Okay, so on this pose, and this happens when you have set it up and you're going to change a pose or whatever, I need to make sure that, if you guys remember from last week, that my IK arms and my FK arms on the two poses where they cross over on the same place. So there, I need to say snap FK, uh, snap IK to FK. Okay. Uh, I think I understand what's happening as well. Okay, I think the constraint is moving it as well. Let's just see what the bone constraint's doing. So it's already. Just missing something. Okay, so the IK arms. Stay constrained. Okay, so this is this is an issue. Okay, so we we should actually just fix it properly. Okay, 
So first of all, from there, the IK arms are still, for some reason, I don't think I turned it on, didn't turn it off, I don't know. Um, but the IK arms there can't be, if we go and snap them to where the FK is, so IK to FK, it can't be there because of the constraints movement. Okay, so I need to go and turn the constraint off. Otherwise, my hands aren't going to animate smoothly. And the little wiggle that I have there is going to stay there. Okay, so let's just go and do it properly. So there is the first time that my constraint needs to be on. So I'm just going to key it on there, on both of them. Let's just turn off FK there. See, so where is my other IQ control? Okay, so both of these on, on the frame directly before that, I'm going to turn it off. Hmm. Wait, let me... Like, it's good for you guys to see these kind of things, because, you know, 90% of constraints is problem solving. Um, so it's really looking at the situation and seeing why it's doing what it is doing and what you can do to stop it next time. Okay, so um, off, on. Okay, so let's just make sure we're doing it right. So keying that on there, on both of them, and then the frame preceding it, I'm turning them off. So they're going to move. That's, that's okay. Okay, so let's see how we're going to fix it. Okay, so now it's going all the way to there and then snapping forward. So the problem is that on this frame, we actually need our IK hands to be here. Okay, because currently they're not. Okay, so to do that, I'm just going to, I think the rotations are fine. So if I snap my cursor to that point, and let's just turn the eye off over there and say, just so that we don't see what the constraint's doing and see if it's actually moving correctly, and we say again, move the selection to where the cursor is. Now if you do that, okay, that's fine. Um, so let's key that there. Um, so I'm setting an extra frame. Sorry, that needs to be. Broken it. Um, oh, it's not broken. Don't worry. Okay, so there it's going to stay in that position regardless of where it is. So it is keyed. That means on the previous frame, I'm just going to key it back there. Selection to cursor. It's weird that it's done this, but you know things happen. Um, so that means I don't want to key the whole character. I just want to key this one control. Okay, not the 3D cursor the item's location. There we go. Okay, and again, not there. Selection goes there. Okay, so that sh arm should be better now. We can fix that rotation if we want to just now. So now just this one as well. Okay, so I'm literally going and on that frame it is, it's over there, but it's, the constraint is moving it here. So I'm going to move the 3D cursor there, and on the previous frame, Okay, I'm going to put it there as well. So over there, I want it to be selection to go, so put it there as well. Okay, so just on the hands then, it'll move there. It's not constrained before the time, so now we can just blend a lot nicer. Okay, um, so let's see. So on this frame, as we were saying, uh, on 63, they're FK, and on 69, they're uh, IK. Cool. Let's try this again. Okay, so over here we need the FK arms and the IK arms both visible. We need to make sure that they're all in the same place. So on this pose, let's go and snap the FKs to where the IKs are. Okay. Um, in fact, let's do it for that one. I don't know if I want to do that instead. FK to IK. Ah, yes, let's do it over here. Okay, so I'm just going to key my whole character there. Okay, that means that's going to work a little bit better. And on this frame, I want the IKs to be where the FKs are. So if you go IK to FK, and on the other hand, IK to FK as well, then that should fix that. Okay, so now we should get a much smoother motion from there to there, which we are. 
Okay, so literally just by fixing the way that it's switching between FK and IK, it, it fixed the actual motion of the hand. Okay, which makes a big difference. Okay. Um, then little things like that we can do now as well. Okay, so in this process where we didn't see it in our splining, in our blocking, but here it's very obvious. So his hands are open, 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 touches, and then all of a sudden starts to close. Okay. So we can have that whole closing be a little bit smoother. Okay, and the closing is all on what the fingers are doing. So if it's a case of adding more frames, then that's one, or more keys, that happens. If it's a case of just adjusting the curve, then that also happens. Okay. Um, so it feels like that motion stops and then closes, but it would be very cool if there it just goes into it. Okay, so I'm going to do it, um, let's adjust it by looking at the curves. Okay, again in the graph editor. Okay, so um, what that's doing, it's rotating from there and scaling, I believe. Okay, so it's rotating and scaling. And if we look there, ideally what we'd want to do is have it just blend a little bit nicer. So if we look over here, um, I don't even know what that is. Y scale is a big one. Okay, so if we look at the Y scale, this affects the, the curve of the finger. So you can see if we pull that down, that this hand's a bit dodgy in terms of the weight painting, so don't worry too much about that. I will fix it at some point. Um, so pulling it down will make it bend a little bit earlier. Okay, so we can go and smooth that out definitely to do something more like that. Okay, so that it goes, so we didn't move them in time but we'll get a smoother motion between those, okay? And that we'd have to do on all of these controls as well. Okay, so for instance, that one, we can get its Y. Okay, so somewhat like that. So we're getting a nicer, okay, which does definitely make a difference. Let's look at this one as well. Okay, and then that rotation also needs to do something. Okay, so if we look at the X rotation on all of those, remember home, the home button um, fills the, or fits the curve to your view. Okay, so from there, it should rotate a little bit smoother. So let's just look at what these are doing. Um, Okay, and I think if you look at this, from there, where it previously was stationary, to there, should all be one motion. Um, so I think that little pause there before it rotates again is what's causing it. So here we can um, probably just go and smooth this out and do something more like that. This already feels better. There, I do want it to be rotated more closely to that point. Okay, um, also with this one, okay, there it's a very, very clear, so we want something more like that. Does this make sense, what I'm doing? Okay, and this is, this is how splining splines. Okay, so we look for little niggles in it, it's really mostly looking at the animation, seeing where it needs to be moving nicer and doing it. Okay, so I'm aware that that's going through there. Maybe we can adjust there as well. I don't know if it's something that's easy to adjust. Um, anyway, I'm going to ignore the fact that it's going through the bar because that was an old issue. Um, you see there, it really is just a nicer way of him to actually hold it. So I'm going to do the same on this. Um, I mean, for instance, there, if you look at that thumb rotating, I know that wet painting's dodgy, I've said it, 
Um, but for instance, if we could have it still like go a little bit more there. Oh, that's not the scale. Sorry, wrong color. Um, there's the scale. Okay, so from there, we can have more movement between there and there. Um, and also we can have, for instance, we can make it still rotate here a little bit, so we can like over-rotate it a bit. Uh, so there's more movement, so it doesn't just stop moving. So you see there, it feels like it tightens a little bit and then goes. Which is pretty cool. Little things. And it's really like a million little things that collectively all boost the level of your animation a lot. Okay, so another thing that I remember about me just now, we'll take a break now, um, for instance, is the Y location of this. Um, so when he pulls back on the bar, then it feels like he should maybe just come forward a little bit more over there. So that position should maybe just come a little bit more forward like that. Okay, so he pulls back and then goes more forward. Okay, so here I don't really want his hips to freeze up too much. So over there, you can see that it generally has the tendency to be that, and then that's like off of that curve. So we can try and see if that maybe makes it better, which it does actually. Let me see if doing that. I don't think that should actually be going back so much. So he can pull back, move forward, stay there. He doesn't need to go back there. So actually I'm changing this a lot more than I thought I would. But that's what this whole process is about. So moves back. No, sorry, while I'm here. So he grabs on there, but stays very still there. And I think that can definitely do with some more motion. So selecting that key. And breaking up that stillness a little bit. Okay, so little things like that. There, I'm also going to just round that out just a bit more using either like moving it up or down or adjusting the tangent of it or whatever it may be. But just to smooth these curves out a little bit more, okay, where it needs it. Does that make sense? Somewhat. Okay, and that's that's what the process is all about. Okay, slow. Okay, it's really not a. There's no textbook definition for how to to do it. Okay, it's really not a. It's looking at your animation, analyzing, seeing what's wrong with it, and then figuring out how and to fix it and what's causing it, so that you are able to fix it. Okay. Cool. Anyway, let's take a. Sorry. Are there any other questions? Or any questions? Huh? Kale? Okay. Did this help anyone? Okay, it's a, it's really a process of looking at your animation and seeing, you know, where does it move poorly and where can we make it move better. Okay. Um, cool. Anyway, let's take a break.